Guys, I am all for being a data scientist. However, it is not the easiest thing to do. There's a lot of challenges. And in this video, I'm going to describe 10 different things that may be the reason that you will not be a data scientist. Now, number one is poor mathematical and statistical skills. Now, this is mostly just a mindset. Math and statistics is something that you can learn. However, I know there's a lot of you that say, I'm not good at math. And so you try to avoid it or do as little of it as possible. And this could be the reason later on that while you're learning the machine learning stuff, you're just not able to fully grasp the concepts and you're not able to code it as well as you should be able to. Number two is kind of the opposite problem. You're really good at math, but you're not so good at coding. Now, I know there's a ton of you out there because I went to Waterloo for mathematics. There's many, many of you that are great at math, but you're kind of trying to avoid the coding stuff. Now, this is okay at times because math is the foundation of machine learning. However, if you actually want to go do something with it, learning TensorFlow and PyTorch is not super hard, but actually building full applications that can do things, yeah, you're going to have to get pretty good at coding. So you'll have to remove that mindset of you're just a math and start to adopt a more general mindset of I can do anything. Number three is if you have poor problem solving skills. So just fundamentally ignoring math, ignoring computer science, which is related, but ignore it for now. Problem solving is itself a skill, and you can teach yourself this through many different ways, through something like lead code, through those kind of technical problems, through actually showing yourself over years that you can overcome challenges and get through them. A lot of you still struggle with that mindset of, you know, there's roadblocks and you just give up too easily, or you don't know when to give up and to switch to other material. Solving problems itself is a skill, and you have to learn how to do that, because there's many, many of them, technical as well as non-technical in data science. Number four, I find is an abundant problem here. And it's something that I think everyone, including me, needs to work on. But I know that it's a gap for many of you. I don't mean to sound rude. Hint, hint, that's kind of one of the things you should say. Ineffective communication is a problem. And I know this from being a YouTuber over the last two years. I've seen many comments from people that should supposedly be a lot smarter and older and more wise than me, but really just don't know how to talk to people. And it's kind of funny. It's something that you learn through uh, just humbleness. So a lot of it is just calming down that arrogance and knowing when you're great, but also not trying to make everyone know that you're great, as well as the opposite. If you're not super smart, you know, you are okay saying it as well. Like you shouldn't say I'm dumb, but you should be able to ask the questions of like, hey, I don't understand this, even though it's a basic concept, you know, I really have to speak up right now and ask the simple questions. A lot of it is just confidence and being able to speak up. And a lot of it on the other side is being humble and not too irritating at the same time. So there's a lot of aspects to it. It's something you get better at over time through talking to people. But again, I've seen many people that just don't get better at it through time. And there's many older people that should be good at it by now that aren't. So make sure you're checking yourself and that, you know, you're talking in a way that people would find useful at the workplace. And most importantly, nice. You have, you have to be nice. Number five is kind of a catch all technical thing. You need to know the tools. So Jupyter is our favorite friend amongst most data scientists. You've got machine learning tools like PyTorch and TensorFlow. You've got visualization tools like Matplotlib, uh, Seaborn, um, Plotly, as well as stuff like Tableau. You've got spreadsheets and databases. You've got just computation in general, computation at scale and on the cloud. There's a lot of stuff going on. And unless you're kind of able to learn all of those tools, or at least be really good at a few of the most important tools, then you, of course, you're going to struggle. Number six is a lack of business acumen. Now, this is something that a lot of people tend to miss out on because they're all about the tools and about the math. And if you've got that, then you're good to go. Yes, that's true. But however, you can have a much, much bigger impact in your current role if you are able to not fall asleep dur during those hour long meetings about, you know, there's some forecasting line about what the business is trying to optimize for and what problems they're trying to solve. If you can really figure that out and try to ignore the tools for now and focus on the problem, you're going to be much, much better in your role. Number seven is a lack of knowledge in full stack engineering, like HTML, CSS, JavaScript, more advanced frameworks, Docker, setting up various deployments. You've got cloud technologies all over the place, GCP, AWS. A lot of data scientists people try to skip out on this because, you know, I'm just going to be given a Jupyter notebook and be firing away. Yes, that is often true. However, if you don't have the knowledge in those more broad areas, you're not really sure why you're analyzing things like you don't even know what you're doing, well, how it's going to be used. And if someone was ever to ask you to build something out of it, you're not going to be able to do that. You're just going to be stuck in your notebook. It's not a huge stretch from learning, you know, programming in Python to 
learning HTML and CSS to actually build something on that. So I'd highly recommend you do. Although I'd say this is not the reason you're not going to be a data scientist. It's going to be the reason that people can't count on you for extra things as a data scientist, which can definitely help you move up in your career. Number eight is a lack of software engineering best practices. That means those design patterns. If that's something that you may have heard of, but you're not sure, no, there's a whole sort of category and many, many different design patterns that are quite hard to learn, but very beneficial if you can. To be honest, I forget most of them right now. I just know a couple but they are seriously helpful on the job and people will love you if you can have that conversation as well as the same kind of intertwined how you actually build a, a set of software. So not just a little tiny program, but architecting a massive database of code is very, very useful as well as just in your day to day, writing the best sort of code that you can and not skimping on the finer details, best variable names. You've got a good way of writing functions and reusing code it can take you a long way and a lot of people are going to skip that. Number nine is a lack of visual design and creativity. Now, something that you wouldn't think about as a data scientist. However, a lot of what you do is visualizations. So it's not just the technical aspect of producing said visualization. It is actually making it look pretty and telling the story that gets people interested. Because for some reason, a lot of people think that, you know, when you're making a presentation, everyone should be watching you and paying attention. However, you know that when you're in the passenger seat watching someone else do the presentation, you'll often doze off. Well, it's all about telling the story. It's about visualizations that make sense. A PowerPoint, if that's what you're doing, is something that you can actually follow and you actually can watch them and enjoy the presentation. A lot of people skip out on that. So make sure you focus on those nitty gritty details of like watch your presentation back. Where are people getting bored? Where are they getting confused? Or where are you getting bored and getting confused? Focus on that and you're going to have a lot better experience. Number 10 will absolutely kill you if you don't have it. Curiosity. You need to be curious in two areas. Your job, so your niche, as well as your particular job if you have one, and the machine learning research. Stuff like ChatGPT is coming out all the time. Being able to use the latest tools, being able to understand how the latest tools are working so that you can apply that to your job. It's just a wonderful cycle. If you can get into that cycle of learn a little bit here, apply it there. Learn a little bit here, apply it there. It will take you exponentially high in the world if you can continue to do that in data science. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, drop a like. If you're not subscribed, go ahead and do that. And I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.